I'm on board the Sapphire, a shrimp boat fishing the German North Sea coast. Jens Tanz heads out to sea almost every day from the port of Cuxhaven. He catches shrimp and other marine animals, but a lot of trash ends up in his nets as well. We've caught all sorts of things, he says. Car hoods, bikes, radiators. But most of the trash we catch is small stuff. Plastic pots, beer cans, rubber boots. We've netted hard hats as well. It's that kind of stuff. The world's oceans are turning into a giant trash dump. Researchers estimate that 150 million tons of rubbish is drifting through the seas, and most of that is plastic. The North Sea is no exception. There's nothing here like the Great Pacific or Great North Atlantic garbage patch, but there's still plenty of trash in the water. Jens Tanz has joined the Fishing for Litter initiative. It's a voluntary program. Fishermen like Jens collect the trash that ends up in their nets and dispose of it properly on land. You have to start somewhere, says Jens. For professional fishermen like him, the growing problem of garbage in the seas is a real threat to their livelihood. Things will get really bad if we don't do something about it, he explains. And then we'll have a problem we can't solve anymore. Once the ecosystem is disrupted, it can fall apart. That's just how it is. And that's going to hit what's living in the sea. When he heads back to port, he knows he'll be able to get rid of any trash he fishes out of the sea at no cost to him. But I'm surprised that Jens has brought back so little garbage. It's often a lot more, he says. It depends on the fishing ground. Canisters, bits of plastic sheeting. He says some loser has thrown an old net in there. It's not something he caught. Between 70 and 80 German fishermen have joined the Fishing for Litter initiative. It's not clear to me just how much trash they drag out of the sea, not until I take a trip to the town of Jeva, close to the coast. When the dumpsters are full, they're emptied at this recycling yard. But before the waste is disposed of, it's checked by a team of environmentalists and researchers. They pick through the pile of trash carefully. They want to find out exactly where all this plastic comes from. Niels Müllmann from the German environmental group NABU explains. It's about individual objects, he says, like this classic plastic bottle or container. On the one hand, we can draw conclusions about where these individual objects come from, and moving on from there, we can target the people we need to talk to. For example, we could go to some branch of business and ask them why they're losing so much of this stuff and what they can do to reverse that. Plastic bottles and bags, rope and nets. A large part of the trash comes from shipping. The North Sea is one of the busiest waterways of the world and some crews dump their waste overboard. It's the quickest and easiest and least visible way, he says. Well, they think it is. It saves money, so it's tempting.
Researchers believe that there's more than half a million cubic meters of trash at the bottom of the North Sea alone. And plastic can last up to 500 years. Instead of rotting, it breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. Gerald Millat from Germany's North Sea Coast National Park explains that animals consume this plastic. It can kill them. The microplastic particles end up in animal tissue and enters the food chain. But larger pieces of plastic kill as well. The North Sea and its coasts are unique natural habitat. The tidal Varen Sea is home to 10,000 animal and plant species. But this habitat is under threat from waste products, which are simply dumped in the sea. I want to find out more about the effects the garbage has on the environment, so I'm meeting Niels Guse from Kiel University. Within the framework of an international research project, he and his team study fulmers on a regular basis. Fulmers are bird species which finds its food in the sea. <laughs> Neil says that fulmers often eat large amounts of plastic particles, as do many other marine animals. We know that plastic breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces, he says. And we find it in other marine organisms, like fish or smaller animals, like shellfish and so on. So, that means that in principle, we can prove the presence of plastic in small animals, and all the way up the marine food chain to the large marine mammals, we found it in whales as well. Scientists have dissected more than 1,500 dead fulmers. More than 90% of them had plastic in their stomachs. Niels says the most common cause of death is starvation. That's something that happens under normal circumstances, but sometimes it's the case that there is so much plastic in their stomachs that it kills them, because the bird is no longer able to eat any other food. But that's not the case with this bird. But that doesn't mean the animal is free of plastic. The guts of the bird contain a number of small objects, which they identify as pellets of recycled plastic. Neil says objects like this were once parts of a product which ended up in the sea after being dumped. And plastic like this can increase the concentration of toxic substances in the sea. That's a danger to humans, who can end up consuming those substances in the fish they eat. I head off for Borkum. It's an island off the North Sea coast and popular with holidaymakers. The beaches look clean. But Borkum has the same problem as other islands and coastal areas. Rubbish gets washed up on the beach. But the people here are doing something about it. The volunteers are told what to do with the different kinds of rubbish they are likely to find. Every autumn, people around the world head to the beaches to remove the trash. Groups from about 100 countries are involved. And here in Borkum, it's no different. There are plenty of people willing to clean up their stretch of coast. So, dann kann's losgehen. A lot of people feel driven to act against the flood of garbage on the beaches themselves. 
politicians aren't getting the job done. The European Union plans to require member states to drastically reduce marine waste by 2020. But many people doubt things will change. And as long as that's the case, trash keeps ending up in the sea. Jürgen Hömberg from the local nature conservation group says that angers him, especially when the autumn storms dump more trash on a beach they've just cleaned and then they have to start all over again. An estimated 20,000 tons of garbage ends up in the North Sea every year. In just one afternoon, the volunteers on Borkum collect 40 sacks of trash. It's always like this, says this woman. And she reckons there's a lot more buried under the sand. A lot more gets exposed after storm surges. And most of it is plastic. Jens Albrecht looks after environmental issues on the island. What you get is a lot of small threads, he says. They're the remnants of fishing nets. They're not really that obvious, especially in the mass of things that get washed up, like seaweed and feathers. It's pretty hidden, but you can hardly take a step without finding bits of plastic. The seas are full of trash. That's a threat to the environment and to us as well. It's becoming clear to me that although the sea is beautiful to look at, it's a time bomb waiting to explode.